When Earth made first contact, they had just come out of a massive and devastating war. It was a rich world, but human civilization really did not take good care of their planet. Many in the local interstellar community pitied them for it, and some even offered to help them. The humans hated to be seen this way, as weak and also kind of dumb, but could they really deny it? In just a bit over a hundred years, they had fought three horrible wars, and yet still there was no sign of them ever getting along. But there was one thing that humans could be proud of. Their culture. Human music, film, games, food, and so on, spread throughout the stars like nothing else. Only 40 years after first contact, you could travel 50 light years, and people would know what pizza is. All of this made Earth really popular. Tourism on Earth was high, and it improved the world little by little. 50 years after first contact, Earth is still a mess in many ways, but it was the proud centre of a growing interstellar civilization. The future seemed bright for once. However, Earth's new importance drew unwanted attention onto it as well, especially from the nearby Lord Sul Empire. The Lord Salians began to see Earth as a danger. Even though human media was illegal in the Empire, it still seeped through. So did some human values, which gave some worlds ideas about secession. And even in its core worlds, human ideals, which were seen as incompatible with imperial doctrine, gave rise to rebellious ideas. Previously, the Lossal Empire had regarded Earth as just some shithole planet of savages, a bunch of tribes not important enough to even conquer. However, things had changed, and soon the war machine of Ladon, the capital of the Empire, began to draw plans of conquest. It started out small, a few provocations near the solar system and some threats. The humans were not intimidated in the slightest, something that concerned the rest of the interstellar community. If the Lossal Empire wanted to conquer someone, they did. And they usually won. However, the humans rather wished to fight over some asteroids with each other instead. There was a joke going around that the human nations did not care if they were destroyed, as long as the country next to them was as well. And then it happened. The Lossal Empire had declared war on a small human nation called Nigeria. This would be quick. Nigeria barely had a space fleet or any big colonies, it would be a quick invasion that would show the humans who was boss. The small Nigerian fleet was destroyed in just two battles in Saturn's orbit. Then the Los Salians made their way to Earth. Some nations allied with Nigeria joined the war. However, none of them were stellar chance. Around the sun, the attacking fleet was ambushed by allied ships. They put up a good fight, but regardless, the Los Salians moved on. Until they finally reached Earth. The defending nations had put up one last stand. Only about 50 ships. Even for human standards, that was pathetic. The Lost Soviet Admiral opened up communications. Hello, humans. I must say I quite enjoyed your little attempt at defence. In fact, I kind of admire your courage. You never stood a chance, and yet even in your darkest hour you try your best. But I think we both know how this will end. Surrender now, and we will think about showing you mercy. He laughed for a little until he received a response. It was the Admiral of the Fleet of Ghana. If you think you can invade us, then do it. But we will not give up. Even if we lose, we will make it as painful for you as possible. Fine, then. Well, Solian Apple said softly, then shouted, Attack! And thus, the battle started. The humans did better than the Lord Solians expected. Two Angolan ships managed to take out 22 Lord Solian ships by tricking them into shooting at each other. But no matter what they did, the humans could just not win this. They did not have enough defences. The Lossonians bombed the defending countries from orbit. On the ground, the humans had the superiority for a while, but even that changed as Lossonian soldiers and drones landed in the south of Nigeria, taking city after city. Still though, Nigeria and the Allies did not surrender. Two days into the battle, a soldier stationed at the radar on a Lossonian ship notified the Apple. Sir, about a thousand ships are moving towards Earth. What? Whose ships? The Apple responded. We don't know, but they are firing at us. Call them, the Admiral ordered. This is Admiral Allen of the English Navy. We are surprised you are willing to talk after your unprovoked attack, the human woman on the screen shouted. What is the meaning of this? We do not attack you or any of your allies, the Lost Solian Admiral was furious. The nations you attacked, we do not have the friendliest history with them, but they called us for help in a time of need, or we will not stand by as they are murdered mercilessly at your hands. 
The Larsonian laughed spitefully. Fine then. It will be a pleasure to destroy you as well. The soldier on the radar interrupted again. Sir, a few hundred more ships have been detected. The English Admiral could hear him too. Oh yes, we are not alone either. The Vietnamese and Israelis were just a little slow. You better surrender now. More of us will come anyway. But of course, the Lotsolians wanted to fight till the end. The massive battle above Earth took days. The Lotsolian forces hoped that reinforcements would come soon. But by the time more Lotsolian ships arrived in the solar system, the battle was already lost. The reinforcement of about a hundred Lotsolian ships were all destroyed, and the Kuiper Belt. This was a humiliating defeat for the Empire, and his military leaders were furious. They would not give up. Earth will be destroyed. They would show the galaxy what happens when you mess with the Empire. They would send a massive armada to the solar system. Hundreds of thousands of ships. There was no way the humans could withstand this time. And sure enough, as the Larsonians launched their first attack on the Saturn moon, and Calidus, the defending forces were completely wiped out. The small colony was destroyed, with no survivors left. Around Pluto, the Japanese navy could deal heavy casualties to the Lotsolians, at the cost of losing half their fleet. After four years, nearly the entire solar system was conquered with millions dead. Earth had given everything. For every victory, the Lotsolians had to pay a heavy price in ships and soldiers. It had taken a massive toll on their economy and their military was exhausted. But it was all worth it. The solar system had many resources that would pay the price of the war, and the humans would take care of all the mining once their entire race was enslaved, like so many others. Well then, humans. It was the Larsolian Supreme Admiral, the mind behind the entire war, that had finally come to visit the Blue Planet to celebrate his victory. It takes me a lot of restraint to not just bomb all life of your stupid rock. Surrender, or we will make your worst nightmares come true. Secretary General of the United Nations, Hamdan, was live on screen. For a moment he said nothing, just sat there with a grin on his face. What was that a grin about? The Larsolian Admiral thought. Soon he will be brought to Ladan as a prisoner. Say, how much do you know about Earth and his nations? Hamdan said in a calm tone, as if he was talking to a child. I know more about your dump than I should, the Larsolian scoffed although he was a bit confused by the question. Then can you tell me what countries are the most powerful on Earth? He asked. What? The Lord Solian was even more confused. The Chinese, as far as we can tell, but not for long. The Secretary General continued. Yes, and how many Chinese ships have you fought in the last years? The Lord Solian thought about it and asked one of the crew members. How many Chinese ships did we fight? About a hundred, was the reply. Weird, right? Hamdan continued. Since they have the strongest navy of all mankind, where do you think they are right now? The Chinese. Because they are not in this system. Neither are the Americans, the Indians, or the Europeans. Then the human entered the call abruptly. A few hours later, the Lord Solian Admiral got a transmission from Ladan. They were ordered to surrender to the humans as Ladan was under enemy occupation. While the Empire spent the last four years biting out their teeth in the solar system, the humans have secretly been building up a massive underground network, secretly spreading propaganda and using their influence to launch a coup against the Empire. Thousands of worlds declared independence with each other, and since the military of the Empire was spread thin, the biggest human navies could easily invade Ladan's home system, as their own was defended by the smaller nations. Now the nations of Earth have split up Ladan. In the capital city on the massive government building, there once was a giant imperial banner which had been raised there for nearly a thousand years. It is now being replaced with a flag with two dark green stripes on the sides and a white stripe in the middle. To some, it is a symbol of liberation from imperial tyranny. To others, it is an eternal reminder of a massive humiliation.